you have even just a slight fascination with tornadoes, then you have likely come across this photo. It features a stovepipe tornado at night illuminated by a bolt of fork lightning. It's an iconic photo, and back in the day, it was everywhere. It was all over Google Images. If you want to buy a tornado poster, boom, there it is. Books and magazines feature this photo on their covers. People would often Photoshop the photo for different online hoaxes. I had this photo as like my Windows XP um, user, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But what's the story behind the photo? Who took it and where did it occur? Is there a video? Did it cause any real damage? And we're not just talking about this photo. We'll be covering several iconic photos in today's video, from the tornado on the cover of Twister, to the tornado girl photo, to the infamous dead man walking photo. Today we're going to discover the locations and backstories behind many iconic tornado images. Let's get into it. So what's the true story behind this famous lightning tornado pic? Well, it was actually captured by Fred K. Smith on June 15, 1991. It was captured right off of Lake Okeechobee in southern Florida around 10 p.m. During the early 90s, Fred Smith was an avid lightning photographer, and this photo was actually a bit of an accident, as Fred was primarily focused on photographing lightning that night. He just happened to get extremely lucky when this tornado photobombed his sweet fork lightning shot. In one interview, Smith stated he hadn't even realized he photographed a tornado until after he developed the film. Obviously extremely pleased with the shot, he named it Whirlwind and Lightning. The photo was featured in many publications throughout the 90s, from books to calendars to DVDs. Then in 2003, Fred Smith sold Whirlwind and Lightning to National Geographic. It then became a stock image online, and after this, many people repurposed it for a variety of reasons. The most famous being the Not What You Want to See hoax, featuring Fred's tornado heading towards an oil drilling rig in West Texas. Back in the early days of Facebook, people would often post this photo and be like, whoa, here's an image of last night's tornado over North Platte, even though uh, it wasn't actually this tornado. So was it a violent tornado? Were there any fatalities? Thankfully, no. In fact, this tornado is likely a water spout. Florida is a water spout hotspot, and Lake Okeechobee is known to get them from time to time. Technically, it's a tornadic water spout, so calling it a tornado is still correct. There is a bit of confusion on the date of the photo. Earlier, I said it occurred on June 15, 1991, and that is the general consensus, but many other publications date the photo to August 26, 1993. If we go to the tornado archive, we can see an F0 tornado listed on both dates, both on the south side of the lake. Since most of the sources say 1991, I believe it to be the tornado here. The location isn't exact, in fact the date is slightly off as well. I did hop onto Google Maps to try to find the exact location using this radio tower, but it didn't work out. And unfortunately, there are no videos of this water spout. Fred Smith unfortunately passed away recently in 2020, but he will always go down as a tornado legend as he took probably the most famous and iconic tornado photo of all time. Another famous tornado photo from the early 90s is this one, and you may recognize it. Yeah, that's a tornado from the cover of Twister. This very striking, very impressive cone tornado was captured by Warren Fadley near Miami, Texas on May 28, 1994. A common misconception about this photo is that it was captured during the famous Pampa, Texas F4 tornado that occurred the next year on June 8, 1995. It does look similar, the sky kind of has that orange hue to it, and it was right before the release of the 1996 movie. But no, it's from a much weaker tornado in the nearby town of Miami a year prior. The man who captured this photo, Warren Fadley, was one of the original storm chasers, back in the day before it was cool. He was known throughout the 90s for capturing some of the best tornado and lightning photographs, and he's still very active today. Since he was already well known back in the 90s, he was contacted by Warner Brothers as a consultant during the filming of Twister. On top of that, they used his image of the 1994 Miami tornado as marketing material for the movie, and it has since become an iconic photo. I spent so much time trying to find this f location. Like, I was looking for this specific tower right here. I was going all over the place, and it didn't quite work out. I found the same tornado on Tornado Archive, but there's just no street view out here near these hills. And I, I think that maybe these buildings in the foreground, they could have been added by the Warner Brothers uh, team, marketing team. They could have just been like, oh, let's put some buildings in here. 
So maybe I'm looking for stuff that doesn't exist. So that's why I gave up. If anyone finds this location, let me know. But there's still a video of this tornado. A few amateur storm chasers captured it off the side of the highway. And you can tell that the photo was captured when the tornado was in this slanted formation here. Now the second most famous tornado photo ever captured after the water spout lightning photo may be the dead man walking tornado photo. This is from the May 27th, 1997 F5 tornado that hit the Double Creek Estates neighborhood near Gerald, Texas. This photo of the tornado shows the F5's multiple vortices taking the shape of a monster with two legs and a skyflike arm. And this truly was a monster, as just moments after this photo was captured, this exact tornado would enter the Double Creek Estates neighborhood, completely destroying every structure in sight, and in the process, taking 28 lives. The damage seen at Double Creek Estates is some of the most intense ever surveyed. The tornado had winds of at least 250 miles per hour and maybe as high as 300 miles per hour. It's a bit difficult to tell as the tornado was very slow moving. I've already covered this photo in detail in another video so I'll keep it brief, but it was just one photo in a series of photos taken by Scott Beckwith at the Gerald Farm Supply Store. It was captured right around this exact location. You can tell by this little gate structure here. Truly a terrifying image, made even more terrifying knowing that just after this image was captured, it would then take 28 lives. Let's move on to the Tornado Girl photo. This image, wow. So classic. It's just a ridiculous tornado image with that column behind this girl. It's so sweet, although they probably should have been taking shelter. This classic image was captured on April 23rd, 1989 near Beaver City in rural Furnace County, Nebraska. The woman pictured in this photo is named Audra Thomas, and it was taken by her mother, Marley Thomas. The tornado did destroy a barn on their property, but thankfully, no one was killed. Later that year, Marley entered the photo into a national Kodak photography contest and got second place. The first place photo was of an Armenian girl grieving her father who perished in an earthquake, so yeah, I get it, but this photo is still very impressive. So let's see if we can find an approximate location for this photo. And of course, we gotta go to the trusty tornado archive. So it looks like we have two tornadoes from the same day, April 23rd, and both are kind of near Beaver City. One is an F1 and one is an F0. Hmm, I'm thinking it's the F1 since it did destroy a barn, and there does appear to be some hills in the background. Let me see if I can do a little detective work. All right, well, there is no street view out here in rural Furnace County, Nebraska. And we definitely know that the photo was taken on a gravel road. Just know that, you know, it's it's somewhere in this area. It could be a land spout. It looks kind of like a land spout. But either way, I mean, look how huge it is. It's massive. And she's just chilling there. Good photo. Next in today's video is perhaps the very first famous tornado photo of the Midway, Indiana double tornado taken by Paul Huffman of the Elkhart Truth newspaper during the Palm Sunday tornado outbreak of April 11th, 1965 insane photo. Look, you can clearly see a tunnel between these two vortices. This specific double tornado in the photo was rated as an F4 as it destroyed hundreds of buildings throughout Midway and Dunlap, Indiana, taking 31 lives and injuring 252 in the process. This is the oldest photo on our list today, but it's easily one of the most recognizable, as it was the first up-close photo of a multi-vortex tornado. It is actually part of a series of seven tornado photos taken by Huffman when he pulled over off of Highway 33. He told his wife to take cover under a railroad culvert while he stayed back and snapped this series of photographs. Paul Huffman's double tornado photograph became THE photo of the Palm Sunday tornado outbreak. He would win several awards and over time, this photo became etched into tornado history. Of course, since this is such a historic tornado photo, you know I have to find the exact location. I want to know if any of these buildings are still around today. Now, it's pretty well documented that this was snapped just south of Midway on Highway 33. And if we hop onto Google Maps, you can definitely tell that it was in this general area, especially with the train tracks on the right. But I want to find the exact location. Obviously, the photo was taken like 60 years ago, so a lot has changed. I went to the Goshen Historical Society Facebook page to find answers. I asked what the building was in the lower left, and I actually got a response. Many were telling me that it was part of the Cundred Gladolia Farm. Doing a quick Google search for that, we actually get a photo, but I'm not seeing that white building. So if we go back to some of the older photos in the sequence, we can see this building right here which indeed matches up with this building and the farm pick. Nice. 
Now the farm no longer exists. However, apparently this farm was a big deal and the Indiana historic peeps put in a historic plaque at the former location. So I searched Google Maps for the plaque and boom, there it is. Okay, so I backtracked a little because the plaque was located at the intersection. And I think that this white building is on the corner of that intersection. Overall, I think the photo was taken approximately here. One slightly interesting tidbit about this farm is that the man who owned it and maintained it, Amos E. Kundred, passed away at the age of 98 on April 2nd, 1965, only nine days before the Palm Sunday tornado outbreak. Pretty good timing on his part. Overall, the Palm Sunday tornado outbreak was the second largest of the 20th century after the 1974 super outbreak. 266 fatalities were the result of over 55 confirmed tornadoes. Truly a devastating event. And this photo serves as a reminder of the chaos that ensued that day over Indiana, Illinois, and Michigan. All right, to finish off the video, I have two photos that I quickly want to mention. The first being the swirling barn photo. So this photo has been circulating on the interwebs for several decades. It shows a tornado with a twisted barn. It would be a cool photo, except it's photoshopped. But this tornado is real. Here is the real photo. It occurred on June 28, 1990 near Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. Thankfully, no one was killed during this event, and we do have video of it, although it's not amazing quality. But to be fair, I mean, it's not bad for 1990. The photoshopped version first appeared online sometime in the early 2000s. The earliest I could find was almost 20 years ago on October 10th, 2004, and it was uploaded by Jay Moss. One cool fact about the original tornado photo, it was used by the Red Hot Chili Peppers for their single cover art for the song Other Side, released in December of 1999. All right, the last photo I want to talk about in this video is one of the more terrifying pics of the F2 tornado that touched down near Dimmit, Texas on June 2nd, 1995. This was captured by Harold Richer of the Vortex One team. There's even video from the same location. If you listen, you can even hear the shutter of the camera when the vehicle drives by. The aim of the Vortex One team was to document the entire life cycle of a tornado. They tried throughout the 1994 tornado season, but it wasn't until this tornado on June 2nd, 1995 that they would finally have success. The data gathered from this tornado helped to extend lead times for tornado warnings up to 13 minutes. So while scary looking, this tornado was actually very helpful. Well, thank you so much for watching. This was kind of a fun video for me to make. It was more chill than my other videos. So if you want a part two, we could totally do that. There are a ton of famous tornado photos. So yeah, just let me know. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.